Now, if you're a virgin, that's good. I commend it. I encourage it for everyone, as a matter of fact. Make the man wait, and if he's worth it, then he will wait for you. And there's no greater power in the world than that of a woman's vagina. <laughs> You hold the key to everything. Women, we are so strong. We are strong. And it took me so long to figure that out. But, you know, and maybe that was just my journey. But I realized just how strong a woman is and the, the sensuality and the power that we have. If you withhold, you can get that man to do whatever you want him to. <laughs> Trust me, I'm living it out right now. I've got a few of them that are kind of pissed off at me, but they're right but here. Waiting. Oh, my man. <laughs> I I encourage virginity or a celibacy or abstinence under the proper conditions, uh, which in most which is appropriate in most cases because nobody gets to know one another anymore. Nobody becomes friends and develops a relationship. You see someone that's cute, and you see you two in the bed as a couple. And that's that's how the process goes. People don't become friends because because if you become friends when you first start when you first meet someone, it doesn't ma matter what their gender is. It doesn't matter what their relationship status was. If it seems like someone that that would make a good friend, but it's most it's the average person's human nature to look into building a, an intimate relationship before they even think about being friends. It was important for me to be friends with someone that I'm going to be dating. Like, when we go out and hang out, we hang out and we don't do anything that me and a female friend won't do. You know what I'm saying? We go if we go if we go to the if we go shoot pool, and he and we are developing a friendship, and he sees someone he's attracted to, he should be able to go and you know talk to that female. You know what I mean? And that's why a lot of you helpers don't know, even really know your man's type. And then when he does cheat on you with some, with the last person in the world, you think, you know, oh, she fat and ugly. I don't know what he sees in her. Everything that he doesn't see in you. Because she sat down and had a conversation with him and they became friends. And you know what? Her obesity became blurred in the magnitude of that friendship. And abstinence, I think, is what people are talking about most of the time in terms of celibacy because you're not going to never have sex if you celibate, which is almost never the case because people break that all the time. I had a aerobics instructor in another state who was celibate. What's up, boo? <laughs> and he was allegedly celibate for I don't know how long. Uh, I Allegedly... That's what he told me. But we had been friends for, I guess we had built our friendship over the course of two years, but I had only actually had a talk, a talk, wanted to talk to him um, after taking his class for, say, six, seven months or so. So we started hanging out. But anywho, uh, it was only a matter of months after we were friends and after he told, after I knew he was celibate and all that because friends know things about one another. Like the night that he, uh, the night that he busted that up, he was like, I'm surprised you didn't hear me from way across town. Anywho, I'm not even drinking right now. <laughs> so... I was just saying that because, you know, I hear people talk about abstinence, you know, using the verb celibacy, and I don't, I don't have an issue with that. I know people know what your point is, but people talk about abstinence, and when, when females swear themselves on virginity because they're not going to give themselves to whomever or whatever cause, because they've already let too many guys in, so then they want to be abstinent in order to control the men that they then allow into their lives. You think predators don't know that trick. So you're going to be abstinent until you find the right one. And then you're going to have sex with him. No, but what you're going to do is you gonna hold it for all those good guys that actually mean well and have good intentions 
And then when you meet another dumb ass that's just like the other dumb asses you gave it up to, all of those dumb asses, then he's going to be the one to get it again. So all those good guys got to suffer because you have an affinity for, for dumb asses. Actually, I got that con that particular concept from Creaky when we went to see Jump in the Broom. Sorry, just because it's a black movie don't mean it's a good movie. That shit sucks so bad. So many monkeyness balls. The camel toe monkey balls. The kind where the dude's sitting on the corner of a chair or benches or some bleachers or on the corner of a curb on the corner. And his ball sacks have camel toe. That's the kind of monkey balls jumping the broom sucked. <laughs> and it had like, I was going to say it had one or two people whose talent I respect in there, but I can't remember. It's been, it's been a while. But anywho, if you saw jumping the broom, I'm sorry, first of all, but <laughs> if you saw jumping the broom, you remember when it opened up, she was banging the hell out of some dude and then afterwards she um gets up on the corner of bed and she was like oh, you know I guess she was going through this thing was like why do I always do that or whatever and that's when she decided to uh abstain from sex until she got married and so Creaky sensibly <laughs> was like okay so now the good dude that means her well is not going to enjoy her because of all this whole army of, of bullshit dudes that she done gave it up to. So the good guy got to suffer. And I was like, yeah, boo-boo more than you think because what's going to end up happening is that she's not going to end up with the good guy. They relationship going to dissolve and move on and she going to pick another dumb ass except she going to get it. And then disrespect and or leave her. You're going to do the same thing. Why don't you just make a general habit of sleeping with people who love you? That's such a dilemma. It's like the difference between a man having uh, uh, and a boy. A man has control over his emotions and libido. And all this goes back to my policing your ped pedestals uh, vlog. I mean, pay attention, just, just oh, pay attention. Like how, how are you letting people who have plastic surgery, cosmetic surgery and Botox and, you know, nose jobs, teach you about skincare. Like this, this bitch is telling me how to keep my skin smooth and young looking and you wouldn't got yours tied back? How's that work out? Or we, we're watching mascara commercials, mascara commercials, where the, the featured models in the mascara commercials are wearing falsies. You convincing me that your mascara works magically. But your models need fake lashes on to prove it. You guys are letting people uh, teach you how to follow the Lord that agree that your relationship with God should be personal. But they need to micromanage how you need to go about doing it. If you need some guidance and some encouragement, that's wonderful and everything. But you guys are on these hoes nuts. And I'm just curious about that. I'm just curious about that. Like, how would you bitches live your life if there was no Bible? If there were no Bible? And just so you know, I love the Lord. Before you go, you can go ahead and micromanage how you think I should do things. That's fine. I'm going to let you have it. But, um, like, how would you bitches live your life if there were no Bible? If there were no book? My sister asked this question. 
on Facebook. Like, what, what would you, how would you, if there were no instruction book known as the Bible, how would you go about living your life? What choices would you make? Can you just be a good person? Can you use your common sense to know good from bad and right from wrong and, and behave accordingly so your life can be enriched? Not even for me, for your life to be enriched. And there's no greater power in the world than that of a woman's vagina. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's easy, not by any means. It is very difficult. My daddy used to tell my sisters, once you pop, you can't stop. But that you lay it low and spread it wide. You don't care who wears it.